of heredity to the gospel of his son. Hallelujah. Okay. And then, uh, so we started looking at, you know, what to do with this gospel, what to do uh, with this ministry that we have received. Uh, Paul writing to uh, the church in Colossae, he, he, he instructed the church to tell Archippus to take heed to the ministry which he had received in Christ. And that instruction also goes to every one of us that we need, we need to take heed to the ministry uh, that God has given us, the ministry of reconciliation. And then we looked at how to do that. We said you must know the value, right? You can only treat something, you can never treat something beyond its value to you. You can never treat something beyond how, how important it is to you. So the way we treat a thing just shows how valuable we we see that thing. Okay, and then we uh, looked at some. We looked at a story in the scriptures in Judges that people's response to the call of uh, the call of this ministry or the call of of sharing the gospel. It can be likened to uh, the various uh, attitude or various the, 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 the responses of the different tribes of Israel when Deborah called uh, on, on different tribes to come and fight for Israel. And our main focus yesterday was Dan, right? Was the tribe of Dan. That was where we got it, uh, our title from. The title yesterday was uh, Why Did Dan Remain on Sheeps? Right? Hello, are we get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. That uh, from, from the song of victory that Deborah and Barak sang, we could see we could see the various attitudes that those various tribes uh, showed towards the call when they were called upon to come and defend Israel, to come and fight for Israel. Many of them uh, definitely did not respond the same way, and that all the tribes did not respond the same way. And even in this in this present generation, too, the call to preach the gospel is not only for pastors or evangelists. There are people who are actually in those offices, but every believer is meant every believer is meant to share the gospel every believer has received the ministry of reconciliation uh you have been saved and it is also um it is a responsible thing to do to walk towards getting others saved too so that uh it's 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 nice and it is not too much of a responsibility considering how much Jesus has done for us. Amen. So let's let's continue from that, Judges. Judges chapter 5. We'll read from verse 15. So we'll begin by just looking at... at um, but I hope we can still remember what, what was taught yesterday. All right, maybe I should do some checkup then. From what, from what was taught yesterday, why did Dan remain on ships? Maybe just one answer from Tomisin, one from Eloho, and then one from Victor. From what we, we learned yesterday. Now, why did Dan remain on ships? And this we can turn on our camera so that we so that the communication can be effective. I don't want to have a sense that I'm just I'm making a call. <laughs> I 
Okay, we are looking fresh. Victor, please Thank go you. and dress up. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. So I said Tommy, right? Tommy, Eloho, and uh, Victor. Victor, have you dressed up? I can't hear you. <laughs> so I'm dressed, very dressed. Very dressed, from head to toe. <laughs> So um, I'm sufficiently dressed for the meeting. <laughs> All right. You are in church, so you dress like you are in church. And anytime we are having a meeting, please don't. You guys should not. You guys should not be having it. Don't be seeing it as less of a meeting. If not for Putin, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Will be, will be gathered in the physical building. So when it's time for meeting, go, you know, take take your shower, dress up. If possible, use your tie, wear your shoes. <laughs> if if that will help your heart, <laughs> it's not bad. So Tommy, Eloho, and the Victor, in that order. Maybe just just one reason you learned or one one. Uh, one answer you got from Deborah's question to Dan that why did Dan remain on ships? All right, sir. When he was called upon, okay. Yes, sir. So um, the first the first reason he said was Dan was probably a businessman, and he did not care if Israel was born in Sophia's business was booming. So. Okay, so maybe that was why Dan remained on on ships. Yes, an okay, exporter. Are... Importer. Hmm? I said an exporter. Maybe he's an exporter and importer on the ship, so he has to be there to monitor his business. Okay. Uh, Eloho. Oh. Good evening. I slept up. Um, middle of the service, so. <laughs> oh, so you, so you, you didn't get. I won't cover if you guys were praying. I know. So you didn't get so, the message yesterday. No. Oh. Oh. All right. Uh, after the meeting today, call Hillary. Call Hillary to give you the summary of the meeting, uh, of the teaching yesterday. Okay. Uh, after she had given you, you can you can write to me. Okay. Okay. And today, try not to sleep off. Let your camera be. That's why I say you should always put on your camera. If your camera was on yesterday, it would have been impossible to sleep off. It would have woken you up. Let's turn on our cameras. If you are in church, you will see our faces, right? <laughs> okay, uh, Victor. So the reason I, um, like the third reason you gave was that um, probably he felt comfortable with sending representatives. Like, so when he heard that the war was happening, he was like, oh, thank God De Deborah is there. We just support her with finances and money and other incentives. They should go fight the war. So she, um, Dan was more interested in making money and um, supporting than actually going to fight himself. Okay. Hey, man. Mm. Uh, what about Toju? Is told you there. I think they are having some issues with their with their connection. All right. What about uh, AY moderator? Can you hear me? He just stepped out. 
It's coming up. Okay. All right. Okay, so today let's 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 continue from verse 15. Judges chapter 5, verse 15. Still looking at some attitude towards the call to the gospel. We'll read 15 to 18 again. And at the end of the teaching, you <clears throat> we can all decide the tribes we want to belong to. Whether Dan or Reuben, Gilead, Asher, Zebulon, Naphtali, or Issachar. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. As Issachar, so was Barak, uh, sent into the valley under his command. Among the divisions of Reuben, there were great resolves of heart. I want us to look at Reuben, what was said concerning, you know, you know, the Buddha here was just singing. You know, that is, that's one of, the, <laughs> one, of the, one of the beautiful things about women. Their songs are not ordinary. When they are singing, they are talking to you. <laughs> Even when you get married, when your wife starts singing, pay attention to the lyrics of the song. <laughs> and even in the house. You know, that, that was how some women sang for David after he killed Goliath. <clears throat> and, in their, and in the lyrics of the song, you saw, you saw the effect it had on Saul. When they began to sing that that David kid that saw kid one thousand, why David kid ten ten thousand, and they were just singing. So now Deborah was also singing here, and in this in the lyrics of the song you could you could see that she was talking, uh, she was revealing the the attitude of different tribes towards the war that was just won. When they were called upon to come and fight for Israel, many of them responded differently. And some responses were not commendable at all. Some responses were not commendable. And it's the same thing too, the call to preach the gospel is it's, it's for everyone, it's for every believer. But we can also choose the way we react to it. We can choose the way we respond to it. But it's my prayer that we respond to this call the way God has ordained us to, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That uh, when the will of God is eventually done, we'll be part of we'll be part of those who have played our own roles there. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. you know, I was telling us yesterday that you know this this song was it was sung after 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 the victory right yes sir it would have it would be a very shameful thing even for dan because i could imagine dan trying to answer the question when deborah was asking because now you did not join but eventually the war was won but while they were fighting it dan remained on ships and deborah was singing why did dan remain on ships Okay, let's continue reading. It said and the, okay, the, it, it, it talked about Issachar here that the tribe of Issachar they were with Deborah. They followed Barak's command into the valley, into the uh, the valley. He said, but among the divisions of Reuben, said there were great resolves of heart. There were great resolves of heart. Let's continue. So why did you sit among the sheepfolds? Do you hear the, the pipings for the flocks? The divisions of Reuben have great searchings of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. And why did Dan remain on ships? Asher 
continued at the seashore and stayed by his inlet. 18. Zebulon is a people who jeopardized their lives to the point of death. Naphtali also on the heights of the battlefield. I don't know which tribe you like to belong to. <clears throat> Let, let's look at, let's begin with Reuben. He said with, with Reuben, he said there were great resolves of heart. The Reuben had great searchings of heart. In one of Ariad Monkey's books, you know, he analyzed Reuben's kind of response to the gospel. Uh, but but the same the same response can also be can also uh, be seen uh, in some people in some people towards who the person of Jesus was during his time. Um, John chapter seven. Perhaps those people too were also from Reuben. John 7, from verse 40. Because I want us to understand what, 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 what does, uh, what did Deborah mean, Deborah mean when she said that, that Reuben had great searching of heart, great searching of heart. What does that mean? When, he, when she said that uh, there, were, there were great resolves of heart among the divisions of Reuben. Uh, this passage in John chapter 7 we, we give us a clue of what, of what she was talking about. So on hearing his words, some of the people said, surely this man is the prophet. Uh, who were they talking about here? Jesus. Jesus. 41. Great results of heart. Others said he is the Christ. 42. Still others asked, how can the Christ come from Galilee? Does not the scripture say that the Christ will come from David's family and from Bethlehem, at the town where David lived? Thus, the people were what? The people were divided because of Jesus. So they, they didn't know what to believe about Jesus. Uh, some, some were saying he was a prophet. Uh, some said he was the Christ. Uh, but some were, were searching that how can, how can the Messiah come from, from Galilee? Let's continue reading. 44. Some wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him. Finally, the temple guards went back to the chief priests and Pharisees, who asked them, why didn't you bring him in? No one ever spoke the way this man does, the guards declared. You mean he has deceived you? 47. You mean he has deceived you also? The Pharisees retorted. Has any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed in him? No, but this mob that knows nothing of the law, there is a cause on them. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus earlier and who was one of their own number, asked. So you could see it was a gathering, right? A gathering of elders. Uh, pondering and wondering uh, what to make of the person of Jesus, what to actually believe about Jesus. See what Nicodemus said. He said, does our law condemn anyone without first hearing him to find out what he is doing? See their response. They replied, are you from Galilee too? <laughs> Look into it. And you will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. That's 52, right? Then each, each went to his own, his own home. 
So they told they told uh, Nicodemus to look into it, right? Look into it, and you you find out that a prophet does not come from Galilee. This was this this was this was the nature of their meeting. And no wonder Jesus said in uh, what did you read yesterday? Okay, it was Matthew twenty one. He said, he said the tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes were entering the kingdom ahead of them. Because while they were busy looking into it, busy looking into it to see whether a prophet can come out of Galilee, some people, some people are already entering the kingdom <laughs> by believing. The sinners, the, the, these uh, sinners, prostitutes, and uh, tax collectors were already accepting Jesus. Why these people were still busy looking into it to see whether uh, it was possible for Messiah to come out of Galilee, <laughs> to see whether it was possible for, for a prophet to come out of Nazareth. So that is what it means to have great resolves of heart, to sit down and contemplate. Amen. So now let's go back to, jo to Judges. So when Deborah said that uh, Reuben had a great resolves, had great resolves of heart. This was the kind of thing uh, she was talking about. That on that day, when when the dispatch man, the man who was serving the letter, who was who was going around calling every tribe to come and join the war, when he came, I have seen it was so urgent. He ran and was panting, and he brought the letter to to Reuben. When Reuben got the letter, Reuben was the kind of man who would have responded this way. <clears throat> Immediately, you know, as he got the letter, uh, he would call. He would call for an emergency meeting. <laughs> that was that was the kind of person he was. He would call for an emergency meeting to, uh, you know, among the council of the whites that there is a situation we need to to deal with here and then um let, let me i wrote some things down here so it was a kind of man who would call for an emergency meeting among the council of the wise they would read the last the, the minute of the last meeting <clears throat> so they were great thinkers they were people who would ponder over things very well before they would make any decision so after much uh you know they 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 would have several meetings think about it properly uh, just a minute i'm see what i can read to you from what i wrote here so they were great thinkers so there were people who would think that uh, this was too big a matter, that it was too big a matter for them to, to make any rash decision. Even though they could see the urgency, even though they could see the urgency with which the call came to them, they would, they would still take their time to have all the necessary meetings. Uh, and uh, after much deliberation, let, let me let me just let me just read as I'm reporting Ruben now what he did. Uh, after much deliberation, they adjourned the meeting to the next day for further consideration. So they soon agreed that perhaps they needed to take uh, they needed to take an action over the matter. That okay, this is a very serious matter, but uh, you will know we know we have to take an action. Deborah has called. And we can see that there is actually an invasion over over our country but uh we need to discuss this properly so perhaps the first day that was what they did <laughs> or the next day after adjourning the meeting perhaps that was what they did they soon agreed they needed to take an action quite all right but they also need a solid plan they would need a solid plan so because because they would need a solid plan uh that means they would need to meet again 
they will need to fix another meeting where they can plan their strategy very well and then uh so somebody proposed the next day to adjourn the meeting to the next day but next the next the following day was not convenient for everybody some said they will be busy so the the earliest uh possible time for them to meet would be maybe next monday so they adjourned the meeting to next to next monday so on that on that day uh the next meeting they went when they began to plan for their strategy it was a very long meeting a very long meeting they had to even take a coffee break some had to walk out you know to just stretch their legs perhaps while walking out they saw they could they could hear the bombings and smoke everywhere of villages that have been burnt Perhaps they saw somebody who just even escaped or who was running from the attack. But in their mind, they are, they are like, yeah, we are working on it. At least we are doing something. That's, that's why we are having this meeting. Uh, so that, that, was, that was the kind of person they were. But in the meeting, another concern could have also come up. Or they had another major issue to deal with. And that was the leader. That was the, the, the leader or the person who was pioneering uh, the defense of Israel, Deborah. She was a woman. She was a woman. So they would look, so, so the, the question is, is this scriptural? Uh, is, this, is, this, is this scriptural for a woman to lead Israel to war? Is this acceptable? Has it been hard before? <laughs> Can God follow men to war? Men who are following a woman to war. Can God fight for such men? So for a woman to assume that kind of role, uh, you know, was also a major obstacle. Part of the things they had to resolve in their hearts. And soon they came to that conclusion that as a matter of principle, looking at the scriptures with all their studies and wisdom that uh they would they would have to decline the Buddha's call <laughs> that would have to be the that was the conclusion of the meeting <laughs> i haven't looked at every side properly after after so many adjournment of the meeting after so many coffee breaks during the meeting the uh, they came to a conclusion that it does not seem scriptural. So they would have to decline the Buddha's call. They would have to decline uh, the Buddha's call. You know, while thinking of this, I, I saw a group of people that too much learning had made them mad. <laughs> you know, you know, Festus, you know, Festus was uh you know he, he said something like that to paul in in acts 26 you can really put that scripture for me act 26 yeah from verse 22. so they were busy looking into it like the pharisees they look, look into it and you will find that the prophet does not come out of Galilee. So they were busy looking into the into the Buddha's call, resolving every every issue in their heart. But eventually, can you put that scripture for me? Acts twenty-six, from verse twenty-two. Uh, where's our projector man? Act 26. From verse 22. So at this point, first us interrupt uh, from verse 22. Okay. 22. 
This was Paul talking here. He said, but I have had I have had God's help to this very day. And so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen. And what would happen? That the Christ would suffer and as the first to rise from the dead would proclaim light to his own people and to the Gentiles. Then see what Festus said. At this point, Festus interrupted, interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he, sh he shouted. Your great lady is driving you insane. You can put 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 NKJV for me. I love I love that version. Or put KJV. Twenty-four. Well, as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul. Thou art beside thyself, much learning doth <laughs> do make thee mad. <laughs> the, this, this statement is what would have been so fitting for, for this kind of uh, people, these Rubenites. People who would keep looking into, into it, doing a lot of exegesis, why, uh, you know, why, why souls are perishing. <laughs> Are you, are you, I'm not in any way undermining the importance of knowledge, but there are people who uh, have this attitude, and it's just actually hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy because they are not really willing to go, and because of that, they uh, they, they seem to be busy finding uh, reasons and. Uh, I don't even know how to say this, but I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Things that that are not very important, resolves resolves of heart. That Reuben was that kind of person. Reuben was that kind of person who had a great resolve. He had great resolves of heart. Reuben had great searching of heart, and eventually, he did not heed Deborah's call for the battle because a lot of things would have been looked into that that eventually prevented uh, prevented them from participating in the war hallelujah and there are people who have such such attitude towards the gospel there are people who will be who, who are out there busy criticizing women who are preaching the gospel and they themselves they will never go but their own point is that is this scriptura. They will begin to look for all passages, <laughs> all passages in the Bible, just to attack women preaching. And they themselves, for the past 10 years, they've never gone out for any evangelism. They've never preached to a soul. But they can quote or they can show you all the passages where maybe Paul was addressing some issues in Corinth concerning women. So there are people like that. Rather than rather than going out and heeding the call of the Great Commission, they will be there having great resolves of heart. And eventually that's what they will be doing till the whole battle will be won. There are people who will continue to be out there analyzing other pastors' preaching, analyzing, analyzing their their gesture analyzing their verses analyzing their sermons criticizing checking where they needed to put dot that was not that you know what where they needed to dot and they didn't dot it where they needed to cross their t and the t was not crossed that was that is their own that is their own ministry and eventually they never do anything for god so we should beware of this kind of attitude too towards the call uh, for the great commission we should not be people who would just uh, who would sit and, and plan and plan and resolve so many issues why why it should not be done rather we should find reasons why it should be done hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying 
So Ruben was that kind of person. He was a person who had great resolves of heart. He had to analyze so many things, meetings upon meetings. Check every part, you know, whether it was scriptural. I'm sure they, they would have considered that too. Whether it was scriptural for, for Deborah, a woman, to be the leader of Israel. So these are people that too much learning had made them mad. They, they, it, they have taken it to the next level. So they will, be look, they will be busy looking into the matter. Why others will be doing the job? Just like the Pharisees were busy looking into it. Whether, whether it was, uh, you know, whether it was right for the Mesa to come out from Galilee. Why they were busy looking into it. Tax collectors, prostitutes, sinners were getting, they were believing on Jesus already. Hallelujah. So that, that was what, uh, that was the kind of attitude that Reuben uh, showed towards the call to defend Israel. But let's, let's move to Gilead. That verse, verse 17, right? He said, Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. Amen. He said, Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. Maybe I'll, I'll just combine the two, Gilead and uh, Asher. Let's read verse 17. So Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. And then why did why did he linger by the sheep? Asher remained on the coast and stayed in his coast. Somebody say Asher. Uh, put NKJV for me. And you can also get uh, amplified ready. I would like to see how what amplified said concerning Asha. Asha was a special man. Seventeen. So Gilead said beyond the Jordan, and then why did I mean NKJV? This is NIV. Okay. Gilead said beyond the Jordan, and why did Dan remain on ships? Asher continued at the seashore. He continued. He was, he was there. The, the war met him there. Oh, sorry, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mean the war. I mean the call. Before the call, he was already there. But even after the call or during the call, he continued at the seashore and stayed by his inlets. Put, let's, let's see Amplified. I would like to see how Amplified put this. Uh, Gilead remained beyond the Jordan, and why did Dan live as an alien on ships? Asher sat still on the sea coast and remained by its landings. This did not come. Can you see? These did not come to battle for God's people. They didn't come to battle for God's people. It's a kind of passage I would have loved to read message. Do we have message? Okay. Message, you just message everything together. <laughs> then the remnant went down. Okay. Uh, let me see where I can start from. The captains marched down from uh, Makil, from, Zebul from Zebulon. High ranking leaders came down. Issachar's princes rallied to Deborah. Issachar stood fast with Barak. 
backing him up on the field of battle. But in Reuben's division, divisions, there was much second guessing. Second guessing. Why all those campfire discussions? You can see why all those campfire discussions? They had a lot of discussions. Uh, diverted and distracted, Reuben's divisions couldn't make up their minds. They could not make up their minds. Gilead played it safe. I think I think Messi just read my mind. Amen. That was exactly what I wrote for Gilead. That he chose safety beyond the Jordan. <laughs> Gilead played it safe across the Jordan. And that, and then why did he go off sailing? Asha kept his distance on the sea coast, safe and secure in his harbors. But Zebulon risk, risked life and limb. Sorry, I think something is blocking the. Mm. Okay, limb defied death as did Naphtali on the Batu Heights. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, and that, that drives me to what I actually want to emphasize today. Uh, Gilead and Asha. Gilead and Asha. Gilead and Asha. Before we, we look into the, uh, their attitude proper, let's read Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. Philippians 1.29 For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but to also what? But to also suffer for him. So we, we have not only been granted to believe on our Lord Jesus Christ, we have also been given the opportunity to suffer for him. I always call it opportunity. Amen. Opportunity. That was that was how the apostles saw it. When they were flogged, the Bible says they, they went home rejoicing that they have been counted worthy to suffer for Christ. And Jesus already told them to that when they suffer persecution, he said they should count it all joy because great is their reward in heaven. Hallelujah. This is verse 29, right? Put 30 for me too. Since you, are, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. So for Gilead and Asher, for Gilead and Asher, the call, the brother's call sounded like Paul's call to, to, uh, to Timothy. There was a call Paul made to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, our Lord, or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. We'll read it to 12. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame said he was suffering but it was no cause for shame because i know whom i have believed and i'm convinced that he is able to guard what i have entrusted to him until that day hallelujah <clears throat> so in verse 8 you can put verse 8 for me 
So Timothy, uh, Paul there was calling on Timothy. He said he was telling not to be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, that he should not be ashamed of the gospel. Just like Paul. Paul wrote in Romans that um, that he was not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. So Paul too was calling on Timothy to not be ashamed of the gospel or of him, a prisoner. So when, when Deborah called on Gilead and Asher, for them it was a call of suffering. It sounded like this call. It sounded like a call, a, a call to come and suffer. So the Bible says uh, in that passage we read that Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. And I wrote, I wrote here that Gilead stayed where he felt was safe beyond the Jordan. He felt that that place was very safe. That it was too risky. That it was too risky to, to go confront an army with over 900 chariots. I remember, you remember what we read yesterday, right? That, that, that uh, Canaan, that king called Jabin, that he had, I think, over 900 chariots. So, so Gilead felt that was too risky that this thing uh, this 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 was risky so he chose to stay beyond jordan amen he, he chose to stay beyond jordan so you 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 guys should be able to relate even from from your experience in ukraine all right <laughs> So that was that was uh, Gilead's response. He felt it was not safe uh, to part to partake in that kind of um, exercise, and there are believers too who who still, who think that way. That it is not it is not safe. Saying you are going out there to evangelize, saying you are traveling to to go and do some missionary work. What if something happens to you? What if something happens to you? You were sent to go and you were, you know, you were sent to go and study. <laughs> now you are traveling from city to city. What if an accident happens on the road? What if somebody attacks you? You know those kind of things. So they they think of the danger involved, and they choose to stay beyond the Jordan. But now let's see, Mister Asher. Mister Asher. Asha was an enjoyment man. <laughs> he, was, he was a man of great enjoyment. <laughs> uh, Asha remained on the coast and stayed in his in his coves. So Asha, for Asha, he was a very busy man who needed a vacation. He needed that vacation. <laughs> so when the call came, that call met, met, met him on vacation. He was at the beach. <clears throat> Having a nice, nice time, relaxing, relaxing, swimming, enjoying the, the the beach, the beautiful beach and the scenery. And then somebody, somebody suddenly came running, running and panting with a letter from Deborah that uh, there's a call to rally around and gather to fight for for Israel. So. Asha would have responded. His response would have been, I'm very sorry this came at a very wrong time. That I would have loved to join, but for the past for the past months and years, I've not had any vacation. I've been very busy. This is the only time I have to relax. So please tell the Buddha that, uh, that, we, are, that we are praying for her. <laughs> we are praying for her. But, but this this break I really I really really need this break so, so that was the kind of man uh Asha was they called met him on the beach but the Bible says he remained <laughs> he remained he remained on the coast so nothing nothing the call was not able to uproot him from the coast he couldn't he could not give up his vacation for the call even though even if people were 
uh, were dying and his hand was needed at the war. He felt the vacation was very important for him to cancel. So he needed to rest. So he, he must have said it was the wrong timing, that he had been very busy. That even if I join you guys on the war, I might collapse. The doctor said I need rest. <laughs> that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fit. <laughs> I'm not physically fit to join you guys. I need rest. And uh, this rest, nothing will take it from me. So Asha was an enjoyment man. He was a man who, uh, who was busy relaxing and enjoying his life when the call came. And there are people too who have this kind of attitude towards the gospel. You call them for evangelism, it's always a wrong timing. Let's go out for evangelism. Oh, it's a wrong timing. I need to rest. I've been busy from Monday to Friday. Saturday is my resting day. So those 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 uh those are Ash Asherites. But we must be careful not to have this kind of attitude towards towards the call to preach the gospel. Are you get what I'm saying? You know, I might, I might be saying it uh, jokingly, but these are things we can learn from. These are things we can learn from because, <laughs> as it is, uh, these are the things that we also count in eternity. You know, when, when they were when these various tribes were responding these ways to the call they did not know that the battle was going to be a battle that will still be talked about even three thousand years after then they didn't know it was a kind of battle that god would record in his book they didn't know so they thought it was just a momentary thing that okay uh, this is when we are not joining they didn't know that it was going into the scriptures that it was going to be recorded and will be there forever. They were making, uh, they were making a choice, but they did not know it was a very lasting choice. And the same way to our attitude towards the gospel, it's not just going to be for now. It will be something that will last, uh, you know, that will have an impact eternally. So we must be careful the kind of attitude we must take heed, the kind of attitude we have towards the gospel. Amen. And. You know, honestly speaking, there is there is uh, there is a, there is a need for an awareness even in the body of Christ. The attitude that believers have towards the gospel is so bad. We live in a kind of generation whereby people just only want to come and receive, just come and be blessed, but nobody actually wants to do anything for the kingdom. And that is why many people remain babes. Many 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 never really grow spiritually. Because one of the one of the pathway to growth, spiritual growth, is service. You you cannot fully maximize your growth if all you do is just study the word and pray alone. It will still it will you it will still limit your spiritual growth because there uh, feeding on the word and um, praying can develop you personally, it can give you personal stamina. But if you want to grow in God's kingdom, it has to be by service. It has to be by service. It is those that serve that are exalted in the kingdom of God. Those are the ones that will be honored in God's kingdom. Other ones might just be your personal, your, for your own personal benefit, for your own personal fitness. But until you, so the reason why you are even feeding on God's word and praying, having a solid prayer life, to give you spirit, a good spiritual stature is the reason is so that you can use that stature to serve. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not just to to be having fun with it. So the reason to even grow spiritually is so that you can through your growth, through through your advancement spiritually, through your knowledge, through the stature uh, you have acquired, so that it. it uh, that you serve, you serve with those things. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Have I given this, this teaching a title? Uh, 
Okay, I have not, right? Okay, we, we can use Asha today then. Asha, Asha continued at the seashore. But the point I'm making is this. Um, that the call, the call to serve, the call to share the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ, the call into the ministry of reconciliation is also a call that has to, that, that has to do with uh, partaking in the sufferings of Christ. Now, Paul was writing that uh, in Philippians, let's read that please quickly, Philippians 3, from verse 9 to 10. It was saying that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. We, we read in that Philippians 1 just now that we've not only been called to believe on Christ, but to also what? Suffer for him. So there is there are some things you... Uh, there are definitely ways you'll be discomforted in preaching the gospel. There are things you have to sacrifice. Uh, there are uh, there are things you just have to let go. It's not every time that it will look very palatable to you. There are things you need to uh, to go through just because uh, of the gospel. Just because of the gospel. Hallelujah. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay, see what I'm talking about here. So you can you can you can also title it um The Fellowship of His Suffering. The Fellowship of His Suffering. So there are people who don't want to participate in the Great Commission just because uh it will make them have a fellowship with the sufferings of christ you know you know what you know the meaning of fellowship it's uh a koinonia a participation that that you you experience some things that even jesus also went through just a little bit of it it does not mean you have to die on the cross you know although some the apostles the early apostles did some of them died. Some of them too were crucified, just like Jesus. Even though your own is not is not to save the whole world, uh, but, but sometimes it might. Uh, there are sufferings that we have to go through for the sake of uh, taking the gospel to others. Amen. You might need to inconvenience yourself sometimes. Uh, sometimes you might. Sometimes you might need to go through things that you wouldn't have gone through if not for the gospel so it's also very important that we have that that mindset so people who love too much comfort might not heed this call to share the gospel because they feel it will inconvenience them like asha and gilead they felt it was dangerous asha was uh was enjoying at the beach nothing nothing could tamper with his um, his enjoyment so we should not have that kind of attitude second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 from verse 2 and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. All right, into Timothy. Join with me in suffering. Can you see what he was writing to Timothy? He said, join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. He said, join with me in suffering like a good soldier. Like a good soldier. So every soldier has to uh, go through things that are not palatable. Sometimes when you are serving as a soldier, you might need you de definitely. Even if you know how soldiers serve, many times they, they don't even sleep on their bed. They might have water bed in their own personal houses. Very comfortable bed. But sometimes they might have to sleep in the bush just because they are defending their land. They might have to walk kilometers 
walk, climb rocks, climb mountains. Not because they don't have a car at home. But these are the things they have to go through because, uh, in the course of defending their land. And if men can defend their natural country that way, how much more our eternal country? Hallelujah. So Paul was saying that he was writing to Timothy to join him in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. So you must see yourself as a soldier. You must see yourself as a soldier. Asha didn't, didn't see himself like that. Next verse. So no one serving as a, as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs. Amen. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs. Civilian affairs like remaining on the beach <clears throat> when there was a call. So, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. So Asha did not try to please the people of Barak at all. She, they, they didn't. Asha did not. He was entangled with purely civilian affairs. Is it is was it bad to relax at the seashore and have a vacation there? No, it wasn't bad. But but if it is done at the expense of the gospel, then it uh, it becomes an issue. It becomes an issue. It can rob you of service it can rob you and whatever robs you of service also robs you of reward reward for service uh, jump to verse 8 so we must have that mentality of a soldier we are, we are spiritual soldiers and even though uh civilian affairs are not bad but you must you must never be entangled with them you know, there's a difference between doing civilian things and also getting entangled. The instruction is, is what? Let's see that verse 4 again. So no one serving as a soldier gets what? Entangled. Please, can somebody define the word entangled for us? It's a Bible study. Taiwo, what do you think it means? Is Taiwo here? Yes, I'm with you, sir. Sorry, I had to um, okay. off my... Um, I feel to be entangled means to find yourself lost in something or a purpose in this case. Uh, in this expression, being entangled in civilian affairs is finding yourself so much engrossed in a civilian affair at the expense of other affairs yeah. amen amen hallelujah because i i need you to understand that it was not saying that uh soldiers cannot do what civilians do right the word there is entangled can blossom also try def defining it for us Is Blossom here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, so it, entang so entangled is <laughs> sorry, can you yeah? I think maybe to miss him, I have to mute our own, our own microphone. Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, sir. Um, entangled is like when you get yourself too involved in something okay like too involved that you cannot easily like withdraw okay great man hallelujah you know and tango this also on the word tango <laughs> right <laughs> Part of part of the the root word is also tango. 
if you are entangled in something, it means coming out is difficult, right? So it does not mean you just, it, it doesn't mean you have an encounter with something. It does not mean you just, uh, you you did something. It means now you are lost in that thing. To, you can't find your way out again. You try coming out, you, can, you, can, you can't find the way out again. So Paul was saying that a serving soldier does not get lost in civilian affairs. It doesn't, it does not mean he will not eat or do some other things that civilians also do. Civilians eat food, soldiers also need to eat, right? Hello? Okay, maybe, let, let's do some, some little practicals. Can each, each, each one of us give uh, an example of a civilian affair? <laughs> Civilian affair, peeping from the mind of Paul. What did Paul have in mind when he told, when he was writing to Timothy, and he said, "Civilian affairs." All right, should I start calling him? Okay, uh, Ay, you also want uh, civilian affair, you know. <laughs> That Paul could uh, oh. have had in mind. It might be an unpopular opinion, but academic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good though, but it should not be so entangled. <laughs> <laughs> missing. What is going on? <laughs> going for a celebration, sir. Okay, going for, going for a, a celebration. Like what's what kind of celebration? What's the So building houses. Name uh, a ceremony. A wedding party. Wedding. Okay, weddings. <laughs> okay. Uh Eloho. Money. Okay, civilian affairs. Um, what, what do you mean, money? Oh, like too much love for money, like um, just going after money, money. Um, or okay. let's say, like for pers- like too, you are so concentrated on your like personal self, like that. Because okay. a soldier is one that is thinking about like the protection of like the country, not his own personal self. Or placing your personal desires above all. Okay. <laughs> all right. That 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 is a soldier on on battle should not be making business calls. <laughs> right. At the battle at the, the battlefield, making calls and calling his customers and his suppliers. Why? Why? Why is on? Why is fighting war? <laughs> Imagine he was at his duty post, where where he has been kept to watch against invaders. That if you see any invader here, uh, shoot shoot on sight. And while he was there, checking and peeping carefully. One of what one of his suppliers called him. <laughs> and it was a very a very uh a very lucrative deal. He had to pick the call. Right? Maybe 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 it was a contract he had been he had been trusting God to to get. And on that day the company called him. All right, uh, Victor. Um, um, sir, I don't really know. Maybe, like, uh, maybe too much civilian affair. Civilian affair. Yes, maybe trying to like um, 
have too much foothold in your maybe family life trying to plan your family life like your children um like your like just your family trying to have a solid grip on your family because they're also important can also make you lose sharpness or focus on on things of god okay uh wally uh sports entertainment okay mm. like uh, jesse match and champions league <laughs> All right. The uh, OS has not spoken. Because I want us to just have an idea of what Paul would mean when he was writing to Timothy uh not to get entangled. Amen. And uh I want you to note that word entangled that it doesn't mean you should you can't do some of those things but you should not allow yourself to be entangled don't allow yourself you know for example having a career or showing your career uh your ambitions they are very good but they, they but it should not be done at the expense of your destiny it shouldn't be done at the expense of serving of serving god of service in the kingdom you can you can be so much entangled in running after those things and at the end of the and at the end of the whole day maybe that's what you can present to god <laughs> that you are a very successful career person on earth <laughs> maybe if that one will get a reward in heaven hallelujah so it doesn't mean you won't do so those, those things but Paul said it is it, we should not allow ourselves to, to be entangled when you are entangled it's difficult to get out it's difficult to get out food food too you can get entangled you can so much love food that uh that to stay away from it now becomes so difficult to stay away from it becomes difficult so any and anything that becomes um difficult to stay away from yeah even sleep yeah there's somebody wrote sleep too <laughs> hallelujah so none of this none of these things should master us rather we should master them we should master them most of them are things that pertain to flesh and self Some of them we need we need it for our body to keep our body uh, alive and we need it for you know for socializing and um, some other things but the danger is getting entangled in them don't get entangled in sleep that it becomes difficult to wake up and pray and if somebody wakes you up it's like <laughs> it's it's like a uh, I don't even know what to say. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 8. So remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. Said so this is my gospel. Said so this is my gospel. Said so for which I am suffering even to the point of being what to the point of being chained like a criminal but god's word is not chained therefore i endure everything for the sake of the elect that they too may what may obtain the salvation that is in christ jesus with eternal glory so you could see the things paul was going through do you know it was not for his own salvation? Paul was already saved, right? It was for the for the salvation of other people. And he said he endured all things. He endured everything for the sake, for the sake of those that will be saved. Hallelujah. 
and that is the that is the mindset we should have so we should we should know that we have to endure some things we should know that we need to suffer some things in the cause of uh heeding to the uh, to the call to the call of this great commission that you may need to sacrifice some things that was the mistake asha and gilead made <clears throat> asha continued at the beach because he did not want to be inconvenienced hallelujah but, but from that passage you could see people we could leave uh, we could we could actually emulate what would tribes say could we actually emulate uh, let's go back to that judges there are two tribes there that can be emulated Let's read 18. That the people of Zebulon risked their lives, their very lives. So did Naphtali on the terraced fields. So we could we could uh we could emulate Zebulon and Naphtali. Hallelujah. So they, they were people who risked, risked their lives. They were people who risked their lives. A people who risked their lives to the point of death. And you know that the same thing was also said by the early church concerning Paul and Barnabas. Right? Acts chapter 15. Act 15. From verse 25. Act 15, 25. uh that, that was the meeting the council meeting at jerusalem so when they wrote their letter uh in that letter we'll see what they wrote there so we all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friends barnabas and paul and see what they said concerning barnabas and paul men who have risked their lives for the name of our lord jesus christ amen men who have what risked their lives so they were like zebulon and uh, naphtali people who jeopardized their lives at the point of death and when when they said uh paul and barnabas have risked their lives for the name of our lord jesus christ what were they talking about see chapter 14 from verse 19. let's just see some some things that Paul suffered for the sake of the gospel. Then some men, uh, some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and did what? 